Dear colleagues at the UNECE FAO Forest Communicators Network, on behalf of the United Nations Forum on Forests, I am delighted to share with you some of the highlights related to the International Year of Forests and some of the future activities that have been inspired by the year. Our Secretariat has always benefited from the discussions at your annual network meeting, and unfortunately this year we could not join you due to the schedule conflict with the Rio Plus 20 conference, and I'm truly sorry that's the case because we would have liked to be with you. The International Year was a unique communication and outreach opportunity for us at the United Nations, particularly given our role as the focal point to shine a light on all things forest and on the billions of people around the world who depend on forests and trees. Our messaging stressed the point that people are a critical part of this equation, not only because we need forests for our well-being, but also that forests need our commitment and actions to help them flourish. And while the figure of 1.6 billion people depending on forests for their livelihoods is compelling, we went further to stress that every one of us, all 7 billion, have our physical, economic, and spiritual well-being strongly tied to the health of our forest ecosystems. 2011 was the year in which this Forest for People concept truly came alive. It was heartening to see headlines like New Guinness World Record for Largest Tree Hug at Delamere Forest. And throughout the year, thousands of events were held around the world from art, photo, and film exhibits and contests to concerts and community tree plantings. There was really a rich diversity of events from cultural to educational and scientific. We saw some clear instances in which people that made the connection between forests and their daily lives was clear. It was also evident that, by and large, people truly care about forests and trees. At UNFF, as the focal point for the year, we were inundated with thousands of emails and messages from around the world, some sharing their activities and projects, while others wanted more information on how they could make a difference for forests. This outpouring of interest was truly unprecedented. We partnered with the Universal Postal Union in their annual international letter writing com competition for young people. Two million young people from 60 countries in the world participated in this context, which asked youth to imagine you are a tree living in a forest. Write a letter to someone to explain why it is important to protect forests. It was an amazing competition, and two young women won, one from Barbados and one from China. To build on this momentum and carry this public interest forward in the coming years, here's a quick overview of some of the activities that we at UNFF currently have in the pipeline for the coming year. As you know, Forest 2011 saw many firsts, among them the first ever award-winning International Forest Film Festival and Contest, which was held in partnership with the renowned Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival. The quality of the films and the issues they covered amazed and astonished us, and it sustained the idea that film is a powerful and moving means of communication, supporting action and awareness. Due to continued requests to the present to screen the winning films and people's wish to contribute more stories dedicated to forests, I'm pleased to tell you there will be a second International Forest Film Festival focused this time on short films, no more than a minute and a half in length. The 2012 Film Festival builds on the 2011 festival in continuing the successful partnership with the Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival, and it is inspired by the very successful Menschwald campaign in Germany which was part of the International Year of Forests. The call for entries for this second International Forest Film Festival is being launched at Rio Plus 20. Winning films will be premiered at UNFF 10 in Istanbul, Turkey in April 2013 and screened at events worldwide, including the 2013 Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival. Through the year, we learned that the visual medium in all its forms is a very useful way of reaching people. So in collaboration with the Gabaron Foundation, 
from Spain, we partnered in a children's international art contest and exhibition entitled Celebrate the Forests. Nearly 2,000 drawings, paintings, and collages from 50 countries were entered. Uh, those children ranged in age from very young, three and so, to teenagers, 15, 16 years old. And we plan to exhibit some of this children's art at UNFF 10 next year. We also held the first ever Forest Heroes Awards, which were awarded at the Forest 2011 closing ceremony here at the United Nations in New York, which elicited 100, more than 100 nominations, and highlighted innovative and grassroots engagement by real people around the world in their forests. The heroes picked by the international jury were truly inspirational and generated nearly 100 TV and news stories around the world. One of the heroes in Cameroon, Paul Mazeka, has helped 30 communities to protect their watersheds and conserve community forests. In Miyagi, an area of Japan recently devastated by the March 2011 tsunami, Mr. Shigetsu Hatakiyama has ensured clean water for his oyster beds by becoming an iconic advocate of sustainable forests and farming practices. In Japan, he's known as Father Oyster, Grandfather Oyster and recognized by uh, all Japanese as a truly significant person. In Russia, Anatoly Lebedev has successfully campaigned against illegal logging and destructive land practices that threatened indigenous communities and Siberian tigers. In Brazil, Paulo Adario has dedicated himself to the protection of the Amazon and its forest-dependent communities. In the United States, Rhiannon Tomtishan and Madison Vorva have worked since they were 11 years old to raise awareness about palm oil which is linked to the destruction of rainforest and the biodiversity living in them. And palm oil, as you know, is an ingredient used in many things, but in this case used in Girl Scout cookies. In addition, the jury decided to add a special award in posthumous recognition of the Brazilian activist couple Jose Claudio Ribeiro and Maria do Espirito Santo, who were tragically killed while trying to protect their natural forests. I'm pleased to announce also that the Forest Heroes Initiative will continue in 2012-2013 and culminate in the second Forest Heroes Award Ceremony at UNFF 10 in Istanbul, Turkey in April 2013. Later this year, we will launch our first international forest photo contest. We hope the contest will help raise awareness of people's engagement with forests in their daily lives and provide a beautiful visual experience to showcase the rich diversity of forests around the world. I actually just came back from China in an area where the giant pandas live in the wild and in these rich forests in Zhuzhai in the Sichuan province. It was an amazing experience. This contest will be announced in fall 2012, culminating in an award ceremony again in Istanbul. Last but not least, we are also in the process of developing a forest app for mobile phones to make some of the information we use to raise awareness of forests and people readily accessible. I wish you a successful meeting, and I hope that your discussions today will produce some creative ideas on how we can together build a creative and inspiring legacy for the International Year of Forests. I also hope that many of you will join us next year here in Turkey for UNFF 10. And Ingevald, we miss you. Thank you very much.